Hi friends! Welcome back or welcome if you're new. I'm Morgan, Honeybee Stitcher here on FossTube and on Instagram. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me for another FossTube video which is all about cross stitch. Uh, I've lost track of what number I'm at and every time I say it I'm wrong so I'm just going to give up on saying it and put it in the title. Um, I have a little bit to show today. Uh, I didn't get as much progress I think in what um, I wanted to uh, get done in the last two, three weeks since my last video. Um, we had a little bit of dramas here in, in Melbourne, um, but I have done, I got a finish and I got a bit done on Smooth Sea like I wanted. Um, still working on my Dark Queen and um, I think the other one I wanted to get some work done on was Quaker Pumpkins, which I haven't yet, um, but I also have a lot of plans upcoming, so not sure what's going to happen and what the next few weeks are going to look like. Um, so here in Melbourne, it is Saturday the 26th of June, it's currently 1pm, Tim has just run out of the house to go grab some stuff for his car for our uh, pending snowboard trip in a couple of weeks or well not in a couple of weeks in five six weeks um which would be very exciting so he's ducked out for a minute so i thought i'd utilize the time while he's not home to make a video um we have we are still kind of with restrictions but we have come out of our pretty hardcore lockdown um funny story as to why i haven't really stitched very much or as much as i was hoping um, we had, um, so we were in this hardcore lockdown and we kind of seem to go into these lockdowns when it, you know, like even when like two or three cases come up, everyone starts to get on edge. Um, so our lockdowns don't really happen over something as big as what other countries are kind of going through, which is annoying, but also like, I'm grateful that it doesn't get that hectic. Um, but our lockdown happened, um, and I think it was, uh, we were still in the five kilometers. No, we were in the 10 kilometers from your house radius. I think it was, I think it was 10. Um, and it was Wednesday, the 9th of June, and we copped this epic Arctic storm swell from, from down South. Um, and it took out the power in... A good part of the eastern suburbs of Melbourne, some still don't have power and uh, they're not expected to get it until the 10th of July. Um, so that'll be over a month without power. Sorry, don't mind Nala in the background. Um, we were fortunate enough that our power went out for, for three days and it did come back on, so thank goodness. Um, my parents are nine kilometres from our house. We were going there. I, okay... <laughs> dumb story little side note um I don't think I've ever said what I do for work on this channel um I work in real estate I am a property manager um so whenever a storm hits I get anxiety myself in what's going to happen in terms of my safety it's just I think it's like a shift in um the universe in energies I don't believe in that stuff personally as such but I do believe that like when the storms roll in uh, the vibes and the energy kind of changes and it really starts to impact me and I get really anxious. Um, ever since I've been in this this role and I've been doing this for five or so years, um, there's always that fear of, oh crap, what am I going to come into? What of my properties is going to be damaged um, in these weather swells and these storms and, and everything? And um, the fear of the unknown of what is going to happen, not just to me, but to, you know, in, in a work sense makes it hard for me to then turn off from work when it happens. So whenever a storm is pending or comes or rolls over, I can sometimes feel the, the shift in my mood. Um, but Tim loves them. So we're, we're talking cheese in this regard and it actually makes it a bit difficult because he sits there and he's like, this is so cool, look at this. And he's got the radar up and he's talking to me about all this stuff and I'm just sitting there and the more he tells me, the more I get like my stomach churns. And the more anxious I get. And I'm like, stop, just stop talking to me about it. But he loves it so much. Anyway, the storm hit and I was very, very paranoid. Um, 
the street that we live on is kind of a semi-main road, but it, it, it's also like a tunnel. Like there, it's just a straight line. Um, there's houses on my side. There are houses on the other, but there is a bush kind of break, footpath break um, where it is. So uh, the houses are a little bit away from us. Um, so down this, this road, it's almost like a corridor, like a tunnel. So this wind was blowing... I think they said it got to about 120 kilometers. Uh, my calculations are going to be very off, but it'll be around 70 miles, seven-ish, 70 miles. I know 60 miles for you for um, America is 100 kilometers here. So um, yeah, about 70, between 70 and 80 miles an hour um, as a minimum in my area. Plus the heavy wind, the heavy rain, and the lun the lunder. That's a new one. <laughs> the lightning and the thunder. Um, I just could not sleep. I was so paranoid that something was going to happen to our house. Uh, we had a lot of fire trucks and ambulance and SES crews go past. Um, and the lights would shine into our room. Plus, everything was obviously in pitch black. So it was just even more amplified. Um, so I did not sleep, whereas I think that was the best night's sleep that Tim has had in his entire life. So that was just a lot. Um, so we ended up losing our power from Wednesday night at about nine o'clock um, and it didn't come on again until the Saturday. So we were without power for three days. But I went back to the stone ages of uh, boiling water on the stove. Um, we had a dishwasher full or not quite full, but it hadn't gone on yet. Um, we normally have like a tea or a coffee before bed, mainly tea. Um, so I was waiting until we'd had um, the last mugs and I was going to put the dishwasher on Well, power went out. That didn't happen. So when I came home on Thursday, I was able to go to my parents to work. They had power. Um, I had to wash all the dishes in the dishwasher just so it didn't smell because we weren't sure and it was coming back on. And I boiled the water on the stove over four different pots and like five or six different loads. And we went to my parents' house to have showers and everything and I didn't click that my hot water service was gas and didn't need power. And I deal with this for work. I deal with people um, having issues where I have to tell them and problem solve. And I just, in the midst of it, couldn't. So for three days, we weren't using our hot water because I didn't think we had hot water. So I knew our unit was gas in my defense. But our heater is gas and it uses an electric power point, obviously, for it to actually run, despite the fact that it also has a uh, pilot light. And I just kind of amalgamated the two together and assumed that my hot water service also needed a power point to run, even though it had a pilot light. So that was fun. Uh, we are very fortunate that with Tim's work, he has a lot of uh, torches so on the Thursday when he came home from work, he brought a whole bunch home and we just kind of lit the house up. I brought all my devices to mum's house and we charged everything. We were having romantic dinners by candlelight and uh, which were from the wedding still. I still haven't gotten rid of them. So that was helpful. Um, but it was just too dark to be able to stitch because it gets like pitch black at like 6 p.m. here um, in winter. So by the time work was done, I literally just had to twiddle my thumbs uh, on the couch for a couple of hours and do nothing. It wasn't even at the time, the first night, I didn't even have enough uh, lighting resources to read a book. I just had to, we just kind of sat and talked and went, all right, bedtime. And that was it because otherwise we would have killed our phone batteries and not had alarms to wake up the next day. And it was just a nightmare. So it really made me appreciate electricity. No damage to my house, no damage to my family's houses, no injuries or anything like that. So extremely lucky, but oh my goodness, I love electricity and I will never take it for granted again. Anyway, that being said, it took away about four or five days of stitching uh, from me over a long weekend. Um, I did churn the rest of the long weekend out in uh, my Hello pedal. So I did manage to get that finished at the end of the weekend. My plan was once I finished that to start Smooth C, no, to start Dark Queen. But um, because I'd, I'd lost two days of that weekend, I just, 
I just didn't. So I'm still working on that one very far from a finish for the second last month. Um, but anyway, I don't have any stitchy haul, but I know that my followers love, uh, a lot of my followers love the things that I love. Love, I can't speak today. Um, so just then I came back, I went out to an appointment and I had to kill some time beforehand. I got there a bit early and they were running a bit late. Um, and I was looking around for a new Apple watch band for Tim. Um, and while I was waiting for him to call me back, I stumbled into a uh, typo, which most Australians will know. Um, it is a, there's no real way I can liken it to something else that I'm aware of in anywhere else in the world. Um, it is a like stationary and um, accessories kind of shop. Um, it's very pop culture and kind of in themed. So at the moment when I walked in there, there were a lot of friends related things. So friends mugs, friends stickers, uh, pens and pencil cases and book uh, notebooks that have friends on the front of it. Um, they have like Monopoly in Star Wars. They've got all of this sort of stuff. Um, they've also got, so they've got a lot of things. There was even, um, South Park related things. Uh, they've had Jurassic Park, like anything that's kind of in and now in pop culture and, and television and, and movies and things, they'll have stationery related to it. They also carry, um, like laptop cases and, and, uh, covers and bags and phone cases and things, uh, in those. So it's always really cool to, to go in there and have a wonder, um, but while I was in there, I stumbled across the world's biggest mug and I couldn't say no. So I found this, which says I drink as much coffee as the Gilmore Girls, um, which I love in general, but it is like, it, it's ginormous. I can't even grip it properly with one hand. It is humongous, which any Gilmore Girls fan knows that this is just a standard Lorelei sized cup of coffee. Um, I drink a lot of tea. I, well, <laughs> I drink a lot of coffee and a lot of tea. Um, but during the day, uh, if I'm having a tea, I want like a big mug. Um, coffees, I don't have big mugs of coffee. I usually just have multiple lattes in a day. Um, so a standard day for me would consist of probably three or four lattes and two, probably two teas minimum. Um, that's just my standard, like minimum. If I'm at the office, I find that I could probably go four or five coffees before I have a tea. Um, don't know if I will ever drink enough to fill this whole thing. Um, but this is going to become my desk mug. So, uh, very excited about this. If anyone is interested, it was $15 from, uh, Typo. They have a whole bunch of different phrases. They currently have a central perk one. Um, they did have a, a South Park one with a quote from Carmen, um, and then a couple others. There was not some that had swearing on them and things. Um, it was, yeah, $15. I will try and link it below. If anyone anywhere wants one, um, and wants me to organize getting them one, if they can't use the link, I can also look at doing that for you. Um, I know we're all pretty, like if you're into Gilmore Girls, you're into Gilmore Girls. So you kind of all might get my joy in this cup. Um, thank God I didn't feel it because <laughs> I have done this so much in showing you. Anyway, okay, let's get to the stitching if Nala stopped barking. So I'll start off with uh, my finish for the last few weeks is Hello Petal by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Um, I'll just whack it up. I'm not going to bother with where it was because it's finished. So here it is. I still haven't ironed it because I haven't pulled the iron out for anything else. I have stitched this on 18 count white ada, um, which I've done all of the other trees on um, the same way. I've called, done all the called for uh, floss. I have made some substitutions. Let me get in here. Um, so this one here is obviously uh, spring related, but also has a lot of Easter elements. And I explain this in pretty much every video that these, these trees come in. Um, our seasons are obviously different and reversed, so we don't celebrate Easter at uh, springtime. It's autumn for us. So I did make some changes to this. Uh, first thing I changed is that these eggs were 
kind of designed to be more like Easter eggs. Um, so I've just made them the neutral kind of East, uh, sorry, egg colors. Um, I, there was an egg here. Um, so this is a flower from Hello Sunshine. Um, there was another egg here, again, another flower from Hello Sunshine, and then another egg here, um, which is actually this inner flower. Um, I don't, I'm not a massive fan of the red in this color palette. I think it is a bit too jaunting and polarizing compared to the um, pastel-y, greeny kind of colors. Loved it for the lady bar, uh, ladybird but I have taken it out of a few more of these elements here. So this flower here actually is supposed to be purple and red on the inside and then the pink around the outside. Um, I just ended up doing it all in purple. And then once I stitched it and pulled it back and had a look at it, I then realized it was a flower. At the time I didn't. Um, so then that's why I've then pulled that from it and I've turned that into another flower there. I was going to do this flower in red, but I just I feel like it's just not the right kind of color. So I didn't. I just didn't do it. I said to Tim what color and he picked and he said the pink. So that's what I did there. And I took the two flowers out of the mouse. I wish um, if there was anything that I would change about this, it would be the mouse. I think uh, Beth Chadwick at Stitch with Beth has finished this as well. We were kind of neck and neck at, at a finish at the same time um, towards the end of it. She stitched her mouse really cute. She changed the colors, but she um, made the mouse have a belly and then the rest, the head and the body all be the same um, the same color and she didn't use the called for colors. She used colors that were in, uh, this and in, I think, hello, one of the other hello trees. Um, so it all tied in. It's just a very cute mouse. Um, I think he's still cute, but I just, I think I liked Beth's, Beth's better. So if I had my time again, I would change that. But otherwise this is my spring tree. I'm going to wait until September. September, I think it is, for when Hello uh, Hello Sunshine is finished and then I will FFO these two together to match Hello Dear and Hello Pumpkin and then um, that way I can display them. Yeah, loved how this one turned out. They're such fun, quick, but not quick as in I mean, they can be if you turn them out quick enough, but they're quick stitches because they're such small little motifs that you can get done. So I do really enjoy stitching them. I'm kind of sad that, and relieved that the last tree is now in action. Um, but anyway, moving on. So my two works in progresses or my whips um, at the moment that I've touched since my last video are uh, my Smooth C, which is a Citrovia Emma Congdon piece from um, her first book. I think it's her first book. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. Um, and then the Dark Queen of the Sea Stitch Along. My, here's what Smooth C did look like. Um, my plan was to at least fill in the rest of Never Made Up, that little banner, and if I could get the little extra circular, circular pom done on the side so that the banner is actually done and then it's just the rest of the wording and the anchor. Um, I didn't get that far. I just kind of, um, I got Never Made Up completely filled in. Um, so the pom that I'm talking about, by the way, is this thing. Um, there is another one on this side. I just didn't get around to it. Um, but at least that's done. The rest of it should be okay. I do need to motor on this one and get this one done. But for now, I've met my uh, non-pressured goal in what I wanted to get done with it. So, um, yeah, this is on 32 count linen. It is Semco brand, which is from Spotlight, which is just our craft store. Um, I think Semco is their kind of home brand. Um, it was a cheapo at the time. I'd never stitched on anything other than Ada. So I brought this, it cost me $10 for a massive sheet of it. I can't even remember the size. Um, 
just to play around and considering this is for my father-in-law he won't really know or care um so i thought i'd use it on this yeah and then my last work in progress is the dark queen i have not taken her off the q snap because i am stitching her i was stitching her before i made this video um i am on oh you can't see it this is my uh progress so far on part 10. so part nine was all of this trunk i can't remember if i did say it in my last video or if i just said it to tim um, the, the gaps in this made me think that there was going to be more tentacles um, that come off her and sure enough I'm correct. I have finished these uh, pinks. There are three threads in there. So I finished those three colours. This part has nine colours so I've got six more to go. Um, it's a lot of stitching. It's nowhere near as much as this. So I should now be able to motor on this. I've only really been working on it the last two or three days so um, this is currently what I'm working on just this filling in this little section um, I had run out of two of the colors 939 and 550 um, and I I had them I, like my skeins skeins however you call it but I just hadn't uh, put them on my floss drops so um, I finally did that just before so now I'm ready to go again so yeah, I'm wondering if this is now officially the bottom, like there's not going to be anything, any other detail down the bottom. There's no border as such around the top. I know that this is kind of like the border here with this dead line and then some kind of Art Nouveau popping out, um, which makes me question whether or not there's going to be any more of those two corners. Uh, the top of the pattern has two framing device corners. Um, I haven't stitched them just because I wanted to see the overall piece. If if the bottom isn't going to have them, then I'm definitely going to not stitch them and leave leave it without that element of framing. Um, but we'll wait and see. My, my assumption is that there's going to be more tentacles that come out this side of her um, to kind of finish it off. So she's very Ursula-like rather than being a mermaid. Um, and then part 12 which is august um is just all i think back stitching and beading is needed if needed so next month is the last month of actual stitching so she's getting there she's getting done i say it's a lot and i kind of get over stitching it but it, this is a comfort piece this is one of those pieces where i just i even as much as that was so much stitching because it's so full coverage. I just, I love still working on her and I am really going to miss having this as a project once it's done. I really need to get, get her framed as well with uh, with my B, my full coverage B. I haven't done that yet. Whoops. That's where she is at. So, um, sorry, Tim called. Um, Lastly, I, well not lastly, I have some more plans um, on things that I am going to be stitching. I have pulled out all of my uh, floss, which I've kept in a big container on rings. They're all on floss drops or in the DMC pouches, the clear pouches. Um, I've made yesterday while I was working um, between phone calls, I was just punching out uh, floss drop tags so that I can just start, um, yeah, putting them all on floss drops instead of keeping them in whole skeins unless they're duplicates. Um, I've got a couple of projects that I want to start, but I want to just use what I've got in-house unless I just don't have a colour that is any close substitute. Um, so I've got the, the linen and the ADA um, for these ones, but now I'm just trying to sort through all my floss. I put up a question box yesterday on my Insta story asking how you digitalize your threads um, and how you store them. A lot of people said um, an X Stitch Plus or X Stitch app. Um, I think they're the same thing, just one is paid, one is not for the first seven days, and then you have to pay for it anyway. 
Um, so I've downloaded that. So I am going to pop it all on there and kind of uh, catalog everything that I have, but I want to use my time right now to churn through what I'm working on before, but before I start anything new as such, I will probably catalog, catalog everything. Um, the three projects that I have purchased, uh, this one here is a present for one of my best friends having a baby. Um, she's having a boy. So alongside everything that my mom has made for her, which I think I shared last video, um, I want to stitch her this and then turn it into a bit of a sampler. Um, so I've purchased this pattern off Etsy. Um, I'll pop the details of what it is on the screen just because I can't remember the brands and everything. Um, so I'm going to use a white linen for this one just because keep it neutral um, as much of the cord for as I can. And then we do have this kind of wooden frame available nearby. I think it's at Kmart so um, or even Ikea. So I'll just frame it in a similar style frame. Um, another one I got is Honey Bee Lane, which is the Stitching with the Housewives. We have just recently renovated our study um, office space, which isn't enclosed. It, it is off our main open plan living area. Um, and we've put in a wall-to-wall -wall desk, floating desk. Um, we've had to cut the bench top down. So we've got some stuff to make some shelving units. Um, so I'm thinking about putting this on one of the shelving units or at least on the desk. Um, fitting that it's both Tim and I. I'm just going to do this in the DMC substitution um, on some off-cut black Ada that I've got. Um, and then lastly is also this honey one. And I'm going to turn this into a bit more of like a, I guess, wedding sampler. Um, above and below the honey word, I'm going to kind of make it a little bit more of a gap. Um, and then I'll probably put like Mr. and Mrs. Um, and then underneath the, our wedding date um as well so that'll also go on one of the other shelves um so yeah just gonna use whatever i've got around the house or in my my stash um to stitch these not not get any of the cord for fancy floss or anything um they're small enough that they should be really quick stitches so yeah looking forward to that one and then i'm really sorry i can't remember who sent this to me but someone did send me this chart um, in my DMs on Instagram, and I'm so glad you did. Um, this is a little stitching bee, <laughs> which I think is just so cute. Um, so I want to stitch this one and kind of have this at my desk at home where I've got all my um, work stuff, but also where I've been doing a lot of my, for lack of better word, admin maintenance, sort of where I'm doing all this thread, uh, thread, thread drop sorting and um, cataloging and stuff, kind of turning it into my little crafty area as well. I don't want to, I, I can't turn this room that I'm in now into a, a craft room. Um, we have Tim's family stay here way too often, um, for it to be able to be used that way. Um, so it's kind of just at my desk, um, that I've got it. So yeah, kind of keeping this all together. Um, so there, once I've finished up clean and um, put a couple of stitches into Quaker pumpkin. I'm going to start, put a start in on all four of these. Um, and then I'll probably have these as my focus pieces to churn them out. I don't think they're going to be too big stitches. Um, so yeah, they should be some quick finishes to have and might get my butt into gear into FFOing or fully finishing the rest of the pieces I have. Tim's just come home. So I'm going to use that as time to say farewell. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, let me know if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, if you've got any questions or if I'm missing anything, send me a DM, leave me a comment, whatever works for you. Um, otherwise, I'll try and leave as much info as I can down the bottom. Hope you're all well. Keep stitching, stay happy and healthy, and I'll see you all soon. Bye.